In today's video, I'm going to show you how to put together a DIY fire kit that you can take camping and hiking. Stick around. One of the essential pieces of gear that we always have in our bushcraft bags, our survival kits, our camping kits, is a means to start a fire. Um, because fire is so important, it gives you the ability to cook food, to boil water for um, purification, and to keep you warm, and also to boost your morale. So, in today's video, I want to show you a kit that I came up with. Um, it's nothing earth-shattering and, and probably nothing new. I'm sure a lot of you guys and gals have been out there doing this kind of stuff already and have come up with some of these ideas. But what I thought I would share with everybody today is, is something that you can put together pretty quickly um, with things that you have around the house um, uh, inexpensively. And that is a compact kit that you can throw into any of your bags, your vehicle, your get home bag, your bug out bag, your, your survival kit, your bushcraft bag, your camping kit, your day hiking kit, whatever. You can put together one of these and it will get a fire going um, when you need it to. All right, so here is what I've put together. Um, I had this gigantic pill bottle and it's been sitting in um, one of my bins for a while and I thought, you know, I need to do something with this. And I thought this would be a great application um, for putting all this stuff in here. So you don't obviously have to use this size pill bottle, uh, but I think the bigger the better uh, for sure. So, and on the outside what I've done is I've wrapped it in duct tape. Now the duct tape, um, of course, is a great repair item, but um, when you take duct tape and apply a flame to it. It is a good fire starter. Um, it's a little smoky, uh, usually a black smoke, um, but it does work and um, it's, it's a way of using it as a tinder. So open this up here and what I've got in here, first thing is I found these um, waterproof matches. These are the uh, refills that you get at Walmart. Uh, they come with a striker. They come with the matches in a little plastic bag already. Um, and that goes in the pill bottle very easily. So that, that's a great way of starting a fire, especially in damp conditions, because these waterproof matches will, uh, when they're wet, they will restart. Um, and they have a, they burn with a really nice hot flame. But you could you know, supplement this with any kind of match you have, like a strike anywhere or anything like that. Next thing I've got in here, of course, is a ferro rod. Um, whatever ferro rod you have or you think that you, you're able to use. Um, I have a lot of different ones that I've used over the years. This is one of my older ones. You can see it's kind of worn down, um, but it's small enough and thin enough that they'll fit into this um, pill bottle pretty easily. Next item is a Bic lighter. Um, I threw a mini Bic in here, but this would easily fit a full size, and I might just replace that out um, as I think about it. I'll probably swap it out for a full size, but, you know, the Bics are great um, in a lot of different conditions. The only time that I really see these um, struggle is in the cold, um, but you can warm them up in your pocket or uh, rub them in your hands, and they will, um, they will eventually go. And then also, I've heard reports of these in altitude don't work as well as e either, um, <clears throat> but... You know, a Bic lighter is a handy item. You can, of course, find these in any gas station or grocery store. Next item is fatwood wrapped with jute twine. Now, this is a, a two-component item. Uh, the fatwood, of course, um, if you've never worked with it, it takes a spark or a flame very easily and burns um, very hot um, and for a good amount of time. The jute, when processed correctly, uh, can be used as a tinder bundle, and that can be added to whatever you're creating your fire with, and that'll make it a little bit bigger. Um, so it, there's no reason not to have these two together, and the jute doesn't take up much room when you wrap it around the um, fatwood. So if you um, are not getting out in the woods a lot, and you live in an urban area, you may not have access to fatwood all the time or you may not be able to find it very easily. Uh, but there are commercial um, ways of obtaining fatwood. Now, 
I purchased both of these at different stores. So this Duraflame box was purchased at Walmart. And then this uh, Pine Mountain box was purchased at Ace Hardware. Uh, they both had them. Um, and there's uh, good and bad about both of these. So the Duraflame at Walmart, of course, it's a huge box. Um, it's pretty cheap. I, I'll have to check the price, but I want to say it was like $11, maybe $15 at the most. Um, but um, in my opinion, the quality of the fatwood is um, it's a little marginal. Um, it's not really what I would call super soaked with that pine resin. Um, there's a little bit of the pine smell to it, that turpentine smell, but it's not um, not quite what you would find in nature. It seems like they're just harvesting this um, probably as quickly as they can and not picking the best pieces because they just want to, you know, of course, sell this stuff. Now, it'll work. You, you shave this down with your knife, you're going to have some some dry wood shavings, and there's a little bit of pine resin to this, and it will get a fire going. But is that the Pine Mountain um, box of fatwood is a little bit better than the Duraflame. Um, this actually has pretty good uh, pine resin concentration. You can smell it much more. You can smell that turpentine smell. It's a lot more um, thicker uh, in the wood, I guess is a way of saying it. Like this piece right here, this is a great example. You can see that golden uh, resin throughout that piece of wood. That's a nice piece. That's um, a really rich piece of uh, fatwood that's going to be a great fire starter. Now the Duraflame, that box, um, that's kind of relegated to my fire pit for starting fires that way because it's not that critical um, and it helps. But um, when I'm putting together fire making kits, um, I've been using this Pine Mountain and it's worked great. Another thing I threw in here um, is the striker for my ferro rod. Now this, uh, this was given to me by a buddy of mine, and I, I'm trying to remember what exactly this is. It's, it's, a, it's like a piece of tool steel, um, and just a little thin stock. And um, you know, you can use hacksaw blades. You just need something that's sharp and hard um, that's going to scrape that ferro rod and get a spark going. That's what you want, like that. Um, so this really does a nice job, and um, if I can figure out what this is, I'll put it in the description or maybe in the caption. Uh, but the, you know, it's a nice little slim piece of metal. I don't have to rely on my knife. Uh, I can use this instead. And then the last thing um, I have in here is a tea candle. Um, it fits perfectly in the bottom of that uh, container. Now tea candles, um, so how do you use those for starting a fire? Well. Uh, the way you do it is you get your bundle of twigs and sticks and brush that you're going to start your fire with and you make your uh, teepee um, of that and then what you do is you light this with your lighter and then you stick that underneath there inside that and what's nice about this is you can walk away from this you don't have to fiddle with it the flame will grow um, it will be uh, on a level base and it will uh, create the heat that's necessary to get that fire going so the sticks are over it and then that is going to catch those on fire so you don't have to sit there and hold a lighter underneath your sticks um, you're able to just kind of basically set this and forget it um, and let it to do its thing so it, and then also um, it is something that you can use for warmth um, on itself so if you're creating a shelter with a poncho um, or an emergency blanket of some sort, you can put this inside the shelter with you and that will create some heat. It will raise the temperature of the air and help keep you warm. So that's, um, it's a great item to have. Um, and of course you can get these, uh, you know, at any grocery store or um, hardware store. Um, for new people have not used this stuff, don't know how to use it. Um, maybe this will, you know, help them out, um, help them figure something out. So what, the first thing we want to do is with jute twine, um, it's not that great on its own when it's um, in this form. Uh, really what you want to do is you want to get these fibers separated. Um, and that takes a little bit of time. So once we get this jute twine all kind of unwound, um, what you want to do is you want to be able to start fuzzing this up. Um, because the way it is right now, it, um, it doesn't take a flame as well. 
But what you can do is you can very gently take your, your pocket knife and start creating fuzz. And I'm not pressing very hard when I'm doing this. This is very gentle. And that's starting to break down those fibers, starting to fuzz them up. And the reason we do that is because what we're doing is we're creating surface area. And surface area is going to catch a spark much easier than um, the juke twine when it's all uh, compressed. And this really shouldn't take you too long. And since we have fat wood, it really, we don't need a ton of it. We do. So you're gonna collect your sticks, your twigs, dry, stuff that you found standing. Um, okay. And that's what you're going to have ready to go. And now you have this nice piece of fat wood that nice golden color, that's what you're looking for. If you have a bushcraft knife that has a sharpened spine, of course you can very quickly create little pieces just like that. Okay, so there's that. We have our little pieces of fat wood. We have our fuzz, make our pile. And then what we can do is we take our ferro rod with our striker and you're going to put that ferro rod close to it and you're going to pull back and right there the fire is going now you start putting your your sticks your stick bundle your twigs it doesn't have to be big processed wood you start placing that over it in a tp kind of fashion and that's going to get going really quickly as you can see, this is burning pretty well. The more fat wood I have, the longer it's going to burn. So if I wanted to use bigger pieces, I certainly could. But for this demonstration inside, I didn't want to do that. So I don't want to start the fire alarm in my house. But as you can see, with just that little bit that I did, it's burning pretty decent amount of time. And that jute... Um, is such a great way of capturing a spark and getting a fire going right away. But you have to get it fuzzed up. That's the key. So there are other items you can add to this as well. Um, this kit that I showed it was not packed uh, by all means. There was a lot more room in it. Um, one thing you could do, um, if you happen to have smaller pill containers, or maybe if you're lucky enough to have some of the old 35 millimeter film canisters, you could pack one of those with um, cotton balls that, uh, that have been um, uh, saturated with Vaseline. Fantastic fire starter. Um, burns a very long time. Um, and if your pill bottle's big enough, you might be able to get that in there with the other stuff. So that's something you could always add. And then another thing, to the outside of the bottle, um, Finding some old uh, inner tube, bicycle inner tubes cut down, 
uh, particularly like the thin tired ones, like for like the old uh, 10 speed bikes. Uh, those make fantastic fire starters as well. Uh, they burn um, really hot, um, but then you can put those on the outside of your pill bottle. And then uh, there's also, of course, some commercially available Ranger bands, um, which are very similar. Uh, you can get those at a lot of different survival uh, supply stores, but you could take one of those, wrap that around. Now you've got a, uh, a couple different options for repairing stuff, but also for starting a fire. Uh, everything fits down in here pretty nicely. Do me a favor, leave a comment down below. Let me know uh, what's in your fire kit, what you put together. Um, give me that thumbs up if you like this video. If you do like this content, please consider subscribing. Um, I would love to have you watch more of my videos. And um, also check out the affiliate links down below. Check out the Facebook group. If you're on Facebook and you're looking for a really great group of people to hang out with um, and discuss survival, bushcraft, and preparedness, the Prepared Wanderer Facebook group is huge. We're over 8,000 members now, growing all the time. Link down below for that. Check out the Amazon store. That's my affiliate link that helps the, the channel. And then check out preparedwander.com. Articles on there, as well as links to videos and to the store. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer.